He had been a great educator and he did build up Tuskegee Institute, but he consistently cautioned his people to be patient with the Jim Crow system and to learn to be good servants and artisans. He said it was more important to earn a dollar a day at the turn of the century that was considered good pay for a black man. It's more important to learn a dollar a day, to earn a dollar a day than to hope or work to sit next to white people in the opera. I Meaning it's more important to get money than, than to be, you know, with them socially. He was actually telling his people never to seek social equality. He was telling his people never to seek social equality. And later on, he was challenged by W.E.B. Du Bois, who created a whole new school of thought based on the belief that blacks should aspire to do anything they wanted, be it a street cleaner or president. At the time of my conversation with the lawyer, I had nothing for or against Booker T. Washington. I really didn't know much about the lawyer, and his philosophy of racial equality didn't mean a great deal to me. What insulted every part of me to the very depth of my being was his assumption that I came from a people without any history. At that point in my life, I began a systematic search for my people's role in history. During my first year in high school, I was doing chores, and because the new high school did not even have a cloakroom, I had to hold the books and papers of a guest lecturer. The speaker had a copy of a book called The New Negro. Fortunately, I turned to an essay written by a Puerto Rican of African descent with a German sounding name. It was called The Negro Digs Up His Past by Arthur A. Schomburg. I knew that, I knew then that I came from a people with a history older even than that of Europe. Ten minutes. Yes, ma'am. It was a most profound and overwhelming feeling. This great discovery that my people did have a place in history and that indeed their history is older than that of their oppressors. Um, the essay, The Negro Digs Up His Past, was my introduction to the ancient history of black people. Years later, I came to New York. I started to search for Arthur A. Schomburg. Finally, one day, I went to the 135th Street Library and asked a short-tempered clerk to give me a letter to Arthur A. Schomburg. And in an abrupt manner, she said, you will have to walk up three flights. I did so. And there I saw Arthur Schomburg taking charge of the office containing the Schomburg collection of books relating to African people the world over while the other staff members were out to lunch. Um, with, I'm going to stop there. Um, it's a really compelling story. I wish I could get all the way through it, but I'm not going to be able to. So we're in high school. We're going to pick it up next week. He's in high school. He's looking for the Schomburg book. He approaches Mr. Arthur Schomburg. And we're going to stop it there. Um, some of those things, as I mentioned throughout the reading of the, of the work, uh, you can see the insistence on education, you know. It was really, really important. So he wrote this in 1970, okay, um, at a time when we were just beginning to get an influx of you know, African-based works like Dr. Chancellor Williams, Destruction of Black Civilization, J. Rogers, Sex and Race, and works like that. So this was on, this was, this began, he, he came, he came up right in the wave of uh, African identity. A um, couple of things to note, you know, these brothers went to school despite the fact that people didn't want them to. They walked barefooted in the summertime, you know. Um, they went through great lengths to get books, just to get books, and just to learn to read. Well, I want to just express my humble opinion real quick and say there was a challenge in my personal opinion around you know 1960 to 1965 when the uh, Civil Rights Act and Voting Rights Bill and all that stuff was coming into play. There was a time when white people said, you know what, we're going to challenge y'all on this. You want to learn your history? Fine. We'll give it to you. 
Um, they had started with the American Colonization Society in 1921, I believe it was. Uh, Marcus Garvey picked up on it and started bringing people back to um, Liberia, or Liberia, was it? Um, and so there was the Universal Negro Improvement Association that jumped off, and you know, everybody knows Marcus Garvey was exiled. So the whole movement thing had uh, kind of dissipated by the late 50s and 60s when um, Dr. John Henry Clark was in elementary school. So now it's the so issue. That was um, Dr. John Henry Clark. Um, he wrote it in 70, and in 65, he was in middle school. What was he born again? No, he was in, he was in grammar school in 55. Uh, okay. That's high school, right? Elementary. elementary. Elementary is 55? Yeah, he was in elementary school in 1955. He was going through elementary school. So he, he, he was in school around the Emmett Till, Rosa Parks thing, um, you know, the Montgomery bus boycotts and all that. He was a grammar school kid. And you can see from the attitude of the librarian who was short with him, with the, from the attitude of the lawyer, and from some of the struggles that he went through, that it was not a time when uh, Black history was readily available for everybody. So they went through, okay, they went through a whole lot to bring what is now become the baseline essays um, to the forefront. The baseline essays is the curriculum that we're drawing from. Um, so they went through a lot, and I wanted to bring his particular story one so we can kind of get the depth of what these people went through to bring this to us, for one. And then for two, again, for his qualifications, if you realize, if you look at the time, he was in grammar school in 1955, if anybody knows anything about the black liberation struggle, you know that that was a time when you had to learn about sociology, the socioeconomic conditions in this country. You had to learn it, and you learned it firsthand. So not only was he in grammar school in 1955, but he was the leader of the dark brigade in his school. He was you know, the leader of current events and stuff like that. So. He is well qualified to do the social studies portion of the baseline essays. So with that, um, next week again we're going to pick up on the rest of John Henry Clark's story, I think, and we're going to try to get that documentary in here on um, Asa G. Hilliard III. Um, with, with those in place, I think at least, the, the, as Huey said, I would like to say, as we are one today, let us be one in the future, power to all of the people. Power.